What's good people, it's your boy Animal. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're well from wherever you're watching. If you're new, please consider subscribing. I'm gonna be dropping tutorials, cook-ups, everything for you. And if this video helps you in any way, please smash that like button. So in my Tutorial Tuesdays series, um, the very first video I took you through was navigating FL Studio. The second video I did was for connecting your MIDI controller. So right now I wanted to take you through the channel rack, the playlist and the mixer. It's going to be a bit more intermediate guide, getting to know little shortcuts, tips, tricks, but I will try and keep it as brief as possible and there'll be timelines on when I'll be switching from different windows. They all link in with each other obviously, but um, I just wanted to give you a bit more of uh, an insight into what each thing can do. So stay tuned and let's get started. So we're in FL Studio right now. And first window I've got here is the channel rack. This is the playlist and this is the mixer. So we'll go through each one. Unfortunately, I can't maximize this. So I will try to find a way to zoom in if we can. Okay, so the first window we're on is the channel rack. I'm going to take you through the different options and how you use the channel rack. Firstly, the channel rack you here, you've got on the left hand side, your panning. On the right hand side is the volume. These are your mixer tracks and these are the various instruments, audio files, wave files, whatever you will have will be in this channel rack and every element in your composition. The green indicates which channel is selected. So you can select individual ones, you can hold control and highlight. You can double click on it. If we move to the drop down menu, you've got all or unsorted. So at the moment we've got unsorted. Now they're unsorted because they're not in a group. So for example, if I wanted to put these in a group, I could highlight all of these. You go to a drop down menu and you can do group selected and add a filter group so we can put drums. And now that's in its own drums filter. Okay, so if we have a look here at this top menu here, the, these are your patterns that you're in. So you can either scroll up on these, you can click and drag to move to a new pattern. You can click the plus sign and it will automatically ask you to rename the pattern. So if we have a look at the options here, you've got all the patterns. So you've got all the various options here, finding the next track, selecting this in the playlist, so it will find this pattern for you. You can rename and recolor it, which will be displayed in the playlist. You can set the time signature for it when you're creating it and that will keep the time signature for that. You've got transpose, so that will transpose this pattern up or down a, a tone or semitone. You can also insert a new pattern, clone this pattern, delete it, move it up and down in the list. So if we add a new one, drums, and then we'll add another one and put vocals. And then if we wanted to move vocals up, if you have a look down here, that will also move up. And now that's moved up there. So you've got that option to move up and down. Split by channel. I will show you what that means in a moment. Quick render is audio clip. So what that means is if you have your pattern in here, drum loop or um, MIDI sequence, then you can right click on here, render as audio clip or quick, um, and then it will convert it to an audio file as a one solid audio file. So there are your options here. If we move to this menu option here, you'll see most of them are selected here. So you've got your add one, your clones, move and group and colors, etc. Set the swing mix. So at the moment it's set on zero and it will always be zero. What you'll find is most of these sampler tracks, whenever you add them, they will always have swing set to maximum. So you can adjust that on there, um, but that's the swing for that individual sound, the swing mix. So if we do it to 100, that's the main swing for the whole pattern. So you can set the swing there. We've got resize a maximum height. So if you want to keep that always to there, so you've got your maximum height there. And minimum height we've got here as well. We go channel button width, 
that will be these are your channel buttons you can also use this where this dot dot here is well you can see it becomes a cross you can resize them to however much you want focus selected channel on playback so whenever you select a channel it will move through as you see the mixers also moving whenever i'm clicking on something over here so that will apply in the playlist as well focus selected channel and show mixer track selectors which is showing you here and show complete piano roll preview um, I'll enable that now but you'll see what I mean when we make um, a MIDI sequence and then detach now detached means that you can move it off screen so if you have multiple monitors you can move that over to another window um, and it's free to move wherever if you uncheck detached then it will snap to the window within with the channel rack you've also got here your pattern length so this will you can click and drag this you can right click and set how many bars you want you can leave it to auto so it'll just keep extending by default it will be on auto but if you want to set a specific length that you can do that from here now this option here is your graph editor if you click on this it will apply to any channel track that you are you have selected so for example if we put a kick on every four uh, do that let's turn it a bit low Now there you got the velocity, you see I turned it low in that way. If we want to add the clap. And we can turn the velocity down on there. So we can set the velocity here to the individual notes that we've set on the step sequencer just using this graph editor. Now here you've also got note pitch so you see they're on C5 at the moment. We can move this one because it's the hat. don't think you'll be noticing much difference on there but you can do that if need be and you've got release velocity fine pitching you got your panning here as well so now it'll go from the left to the right And you've got your mod functions here mod x and y and that's used for um, with another plugin as you notice to click into the channel rack i left click to turn it on right click to turn it off so now we've got a sequence we can even rename this so now we've got our drum pattern I just want to show you what you can do on the sampler and what the different options are here. So if you have your um, hats, for example, and you want to create a hat roll, you can right click on your hat, go to piano roll, and this will bring up the piano roll. Now this is generally used for MIDI sequences for instruments, but a lot of people do the hat rolls and more intricate details within the piano roll. You can set the is set on main at the moment and i've explained before that main represents this here so this is set to line so this will be in accordance with what what we are there so if you want to do hat rolls 
it's most likely you'll be doing them on a quarter beat. You can select that here and we can add a few more there. And again, this is your velocity here. So we can bring that up. And you hear that moving moving up with uh, the volume so that's what you can do when you right click and edit in piano roll the graph editor will obviously bring up what we've been in there rename that channel so we can go to we can right click rename that main kick you can color this whatever you want and that's colored there you can just change the color if you want to just change the color of something You've also got load sample, so you can change whatever's in there. So if you've made adjustments within this and you load the sample, it will keep the adjustments and change the sound only. Cut itself. Now this is stops notes bleeding into each other. So if you're playing them in a sequence, it's mainly used for 808s. If you play a note, and then you want to play another note. If it has a tail end on there, then it will cut itself before it plays the next note. So you don't have a bleed into each other. You've also got insert again. So this will insert a new plugin above that current one. You can replace what's currently there. Clone the, this won't clone the MIDI sequence or pattern that's in there. This will just clone the plugin that you've got. Um, delete obviously will get rid of it. Assign to new instrument track. Um, that's now become an instrument track, this one here on the playlist, but we'll go through that in a bit more detail later. We've also got cut. Now that will, so if we use it here, cut, and then we can paste it back in. That, that cut, copy, and paste refers to the pattern. So whether that's your MIDI sequence or anything in this channel rack. Fill each two steps. You saw me quickly add the, the hats in there. I can do the same with the kicks. I can just fill each four steps or fill each two, fill each four steps. And that's a quick way of doing that. Advanced fill. This is if you want to go into a bit more detail on how you want to add them in whatever position you want. So right now, you set the interval, so we've set the interval to four. We can set it to every five. And as you can see, it's adding more and more in there. And you can choose your beginning placement as well, where you want it to be. And then you can hit accept, and then it set it there. You've also got rotate left, which means if we were to go to the piano roll, it will switch the positioning and then if we rotate right, it'll switch to positioning again. We've got receive notes from. So if you have multiple controllers, um, you can set certain VSTs to only receive signal or notes from one controller. And you can set, for example, if you had a drum pad and then you had a drum machine, the FPC on here, you could set only the drums to that controller so it wouldn't conflict with any other notes. And then you can set another controller from something else. So you'd select the receive notes from, select the MIDI controller you want it to use. It will be locked to that VST or plugin. And again, you can burn MIDI to current pattern, which would be basically rendering this out into an audio file. And that's about it for the channel rack. So originally I wanted to do these all as one video, but they're quite lengthy, so I thought I'd break them down into separate videos. So this week will be the channel rack, the following week will be the playlist, and the week after that will be the mixer. Thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bless.